are times that you look at what is going on in DC and you say, you cannot make this stuff up. And really you can, it really is quite sad when you look at inflation, the crisis that is taking place, parents that cannot find formula for their children. You go to the grocery store for groceries and you can't get everything on your list or your order that someone is shopping if you're placing a delivery order and all of a sudden you're getting all these notifications for substitutions and products that are out and the order can't be filled. This is what people are living with in their everyday life. And they look at the Southern border, it has been blown wide open. And they're looking at people and drugs and sex trafficking, human trafficking gangs that are streaming across that border. The impact this has on crime on the streets in their communities, turning every town into a border town, every state into a border state. And then to kick it all off even further, turn the heat up a notch, you have the Disinformation Governance Board that the Department of Homeland Security announced that they were putting in place because they are concerned that Elon Musk is buying Twitter and that there's going to be regulation on big tech and the left is not going to get their way. Well, to discuss these issues, we have someone who knows a little bit about what he's talking about on these issues, Rick Grinnell. He has joined us before when it comes to cyber, intel, and understanding the world at large, Rick has experience that he brings to bear on these issues. He served President Trump so well, and he continues to serve our country. Rick, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. And I have to say, Senator, uh, as you're rolling through that list of problems in Washington, DC, the only thing I can think of is thank God we have Senator Marsha Blackburn. You are such a champion. If I can just take a minute to say thank you for your service. Thank you for keeping us informed and for realizing what those issues are that the rest of us outside of Washington on a daily basis are dealing with. So thank you for being the champion that you are. Well, I appreciate that. Now, I know that you have served as our uh, intelligence officer, the director of national intelligence. Talk a little bit about this disinformation government governance board. The DGB sounds a lot like the KGB, doesn't it? And talk about what you think they are doing with this thing and the harm, the opportunity for harm to the American people hmm. and free speech that this causes. Well, I note that they're calling it disinformation. And what they really mean is dissenting information. That's what disinformation means is anything that's not what the ruling party, what government wants you to say. I'm pretty fearful that this group is going to weaponize government's power. Let's say you post something that this group doesn't like. Uh, is your ATM card going to work? Are you gonna be forced to delete it before you can go forward with say your social security check? This is clearly an, uh, an idea that is under the Department of Homeland Security and the Department of Homeland Security has a lot of government weaponry. They are the agency that can enforce different ideas. And so I don't think it's too dramatic or too much to say, what are the punishments that this group is going to do? What are they going to do to those who post something that they think is disinformation, dissenting information? It's very scary. You know, as a, as a young kid, I was always told by my dad to sit down and listen to other people. And if I talked too fast or I interrupted, my dad would say, stop and listen. You might learn something. And to this day, I, I now am somebody who believes uh, as a diplomat that if you listen to an alternative viewpoint, something that you haven't been confronted with, you might learn something. 
you just might have a better argument for your own belief, or you might slightly change your beliefs if you're just in the mode of listening. And, and what I fear with this group and what I fear with the current Democratic Party is that they're just labeling any information that they don't like as dis disinformation. And they're telling us to sit down, be quiet. And as you know, they're using the same old language of calling people a racist, a sexist, or a homophobe, or the new one, a Russian agent. Those are all of the labels that they'll put on us. And it's designed to get us to be silent, to shut up, to sit down, and to not speak your piece. And so I, I'm fearful that uh, first of all, the group is is a terrible, it's a terrible idea, but what is the power that they're gonna do? What's the next step? The slippery slope is very concerning. Yeah, I think the slippery slope is very concerning also. And of course, I have found it really amusing that they're going around saying, oh, well, Trump started this board. And I, you know, that is just a falsehood. Yeah. And I am very concerned. I've never seen anything like this. Now, you have served our nation for quite a while. You've been at the UN in service to our nation. You have served as an ambassador. So uh, what do you say when people say, well, Trump started this? And then what do you say when people talk about what, where this could lead us? The first thing I would say is Donald Trump did not start this, that's for sure. If some bureaucrat in the Trump administration uh, wanted to push this forward, it didn't go anywhere. The idea was killed by the Trump appointees. But interesting enough, the idea is now bubbling up and was taken hold by the Biden appointees. And so th this is, you know, it's a big government. And so I'll give them that maybe this idea didn't come right from Joe Biden's desk, but it certainly was approved by Joe Biden's political appointees. And if it did start during the Trump administration in terms of a bureaucrat bringing forward this idea, it didn't go anywhere. We killed it because it was a bad idea and we saw it. So I think that's my concern is, is that we've got appointees that are encouraging this type of censorship. And make no mistake, as you said, this is censorship. This is telling people what to say and what not to say and having your speech approved by the government. Now I've traveled around the world. I negotiated in the, Bal in the Balkans uh, and Eastern Europe. And I will tell you that this type of activity, uh, I wouldn't be surprised in some parts of the world but not in our part of the world, not in the United States, that we should never have a government agency that feels so confident that they are going to put together a group of people to approve our online comments and, and opinions. That is so un-American. I can't think of anything that's more un-American. Well, to a lot of Tennesseans, it's a very frightening thought. And when you look at the individual, that the administration has put in charge of this board and the fact that they favor censorship and have had just disdainful comments about conservatives. That's something that gives me a lot of pause and I would imagine it does to you also and for a lot of good reasons. Well, look, this is the same group that we saw during the 2020 election which fanned the flames of the 50 former intelligence officials who said that Hunter Biden's laptop was Russian disinformation. Remember that it's not only not Russian disinformation, but this is the Beijing line. This is Chinese disinformation because the Chinese really don't want anyone looking at Hunter Biden's laptop. They don't want anyone to know about the Chinese officials or Chinese businessmen who have dealings and partnerships with the Biden family. So when all of these Democrats rushed in to say that that Hunter Biden laptop was Russian disinformation, they were repeating the China, Chinese line. Beijing was very happy about that. But my concern here is, is that this new group 
uh, was going to rush in and make a judgment about that during the election. And this is these same people are the ones who called for removing the New York Post uh, when it was talking about Hunter Biden's laptop. This is a couple of weeks before the 2020 election and really promoted this idea of the intelligence officials saying that this is classic Russian disinformation. And so they've been wrong so many times. The same people pushed Russian collusion. Now they wanna weaponize uh, our words. Well, their track record is horrible. I'm not sure that they should be put in charge of judging anyone's opinion from what they've done in the past. Well, I agree with you on that. And that is one of the reasons that we find ourselves repeatedly saying the Biden administration knows their policies are so unpopular with the American people that they feel the only way they can win is to censor what people see and hear and say and think so that they can have control over people. And that really concerns me, that loss of free speech. And, and I would add to that is what's concerning is that they're afraid of a debate. Yes. They're afraid to actually have a conversation about issues. And, and we shouldn't be surprised that this is their attitude because they've grabbed a hold of our school systems and our universities. And now we're, for 20 years, we've been teaching our kids to run out of the room if they hear something that they don't like, to cancel somebody or to label somebody a name simply because they disagree with the position. And now we're training our kids to back down and not, not have the debate. So the lack of debate is the big concern. Well, you're right about that. And we enjoy good, robust, respectful, bipartisan debate. That has kept this nation free and we want to continue to keep it free. And we're so pleased to have you join us. You are such an important voice in our national conversation on these issues. And I know people are going to want to keep up with you. So they will find you on Twitter at Richard Grinnell. I hope they will uh, follow you and keep up with your comments and for our unmuted audience, uh, you can always find me on uh, social media at Marsha Blackburn and our website, blackburn.senate.gov. Thank you for joining us today. All the best.